This is an egg bot, and we are going to show you how you do the basic setup of the egg bot. Now, there's two different parts of this. One is there's the one time setup because you just built it and you want to make sure that it's set up to work correctly. And the other is the everyday kind of setup how do you use it? Um, how do you use it to print onto, for example, an egg or some other object? So, uh, the after you've put it together, there's only really one sort of a major uh, calibration step, which is to figure out how to get this pen arm to the right height so that when you want to lift up your pen um, to either touch your object you're drawing on or to not touch the object you're drawing on, you have to set that height correctly. So uh, it's a little hard to see it in the bot there, but here's a separate pen arm that's not actually in a robot right now. And there's the two parts here. There's the part that's attached to the motor that changes the angle. And then there's this end part that actually holds the pen. So there's the hole for the pen here and the little thumb screw. And so we'll put the pen in the end here. And then there's this flexure hinge that allows it to move. And what causes it to move is this little servo motor in here. And the servo motor has this little servo horn that uh, can change position depending on the signal from the computer. So what we need to do in our bot is to actually set this up and pick the two positions of that servo motor such that it's going to work correctly. Um, so the first thing we need to do, of course, is get power and a computer connection to our, uh, to our robot. So let's see, uh, that is the business end of the USB cable, and here is the 9 volt power cable, and now we've got uh, life on our board, and the other end of this USB cable needs to get to our poor computer over here. Ta-da! Okay, um, the new interface has been detected. It wants to use it as a network interface, but it's not a network interface. Don't let it. Okay, so uh, extensions menu, Eggbot, Eggbot control, and then in the setup tab, um, we're going to choose action on apply is to toggle the pen up and down, and our pen positions are set as 50 and 55 percent, and that's just a guess first guess of what it will be. If I hit apply, let's see what it does. Well, it comes to life. Whoa! We are going to uh, have to keep an eye on this until we get our motor set up in the right places. Okay, so that was the first time I hit apply. I'm going to hit apply again. It's going to toggle. Okay, and you can see now that that motion that it's giving is not quite enough. Um, so let's try another value here. Let's try maybe 65 and 50, 55. Let's see how those two look. Okay, that's closer. Now the 65 position looks like maybe that should be our down position actually. So let's try 65 and like 80. Let's see how that looks. Oh. That seems to be doing the job. We don't actually need the servo motor to go quite that far. So let's try 75 and 80. Do a silly thing. If I had just one extra hand, I could totally do this. Okay, and there we go, and that looks pretty good. The total range of motion down here at the end is maybe a quarter inch, about five millimeters. That's all we really need. And in practice, it won't move that much because it's going to go down a little bit and it's going to catch by gravity onto the surface of whatever you're plotting on. All right, that's it. We've got those two numbers entered, and now we can kind of start to use this. All right. So what are we going to do first? Um, well, I have here um, some eggs. These are actually uh, blown egg shells but they're as good as anything else. Um, now, the first parameter you want to do in adjusting the shape of the 
eggbot to fit something is to know whether you're plotting something that's either spherical or egg-shaped. And that's done by the uh, position of this motor that turns the pen. And there's a little diagram here that shows you when you're in the upper position, this is for a spherical thing, and when you're in the lower position, it's for something ellipsoidal. We're actually going to try and move this down. Uh, it's not very loose, so I'm going to have to actually loosen my two screws here. Um, and we're going to actually lower this all the way to the bottom <coughs> position, which is usually pretty good for um, eggs. And then I tighten these two screws again. This is the only place you actually need a screwdriver on a regular basis for adjusting this machine. Okay, that's the first part. Uh, second part is we want to um, figure out how to adjust these axes to fit the egg properly. So what we do is we look at the object we're going to use and we find where the whitest part of it is. Whitest part is about here. We want to line it up such that the whitest part is in a straight line from the motor shaft. So in other words, it's kind of like that. Um, all right, and in order to hold that, we're going to have to move this egg cup in that way and that egg cup in this way. So to move these around, what I do is I loosen up first these three screws over here. I'm going to slide this this way, slide this in, so I can get it to about the right position. Um, that looks about right. So let's try tightening that down. Uh, there's a, a trick for getting it aligned to the same point on both sides, which is to look at these scales. Um, on the side here, you can read where the position of this, uh, this uh, headstock piece is. Right now, it's at about uh, 13 millimeters. So I want to also make sure that the other side is at about 13 millimeters and it it is at about 12. So I'm going to loosen these up just a little bit, move it out to 13, and retighten. All right. Now, um, now that I have a place to rest this, that's not going to go anywhere anymore. All right. Now, what about this guy? I'm going to have to loosen up these six screws. And there's a trick for this, which is to turn the whole thing like this and stand it on end to lower it down. So put it there and about like so. Now again, we're going to look at the two sides and try and get it about even. But first, I want you to notice something, which is that there's this little O-ring in here in the middle on this plunger. We really want that position to be about three quarters of the way up when we have about the right tension for mounting an object like this. Um, so I'm going to lower it a little further. Let's see. Oh, my screw's not loose yet. Okay, it's about three quarters of the way now. And over here on the pen arm side, I can read the scales again, and that indicates that we have about seven millimeters on that side. I'm not quite square on this side, move it to about seven millimeters here, and tighten it down. All right, so now, if you see, egg is actually centered on the axis. To do that, we need to turn the motor and it's a little easier if you can stand right above this, but maybe you can see as I turn this that it's not really looking symmetric, but it's actually wobbling all over the place. And so what you want to do is figure out which way it's wobbling. You know, I'm going to just take this pen arm off for the moment so it's not in our way. Um, that didn't help much, did it? Over there, not in the way. All right. So if I turn this, you can see it's a little bit that way. And this side, just go in a little bit that way. And now 
when I turn it, it's not wiggling too much. Okay, good. So now the egg is roughly centered. I'm going to put the pen arm back. So this thing just has the single thumb screw that holds it in place. Here, I'll make this look really easy. Does it look easy enough? Okay. Now, uh, let's get the pen centered in the right place. The pen arm is up right now, so I can put the pen in and screw it down. And now I'm going to lower it until it's just above the surface of the egg and tighten this thumb screw down. If at this point you want to adjust the pen height, rather than unscrewing that one, you should just unscrew this one and make a little tiny adjustment. The other thing we want to do is try sort of test turning it to make sure we can go over the full travel and that it doesn't actually touch anywhere. I think I actually want to lower it a little bit further because we're st still more than three millimeters above the egg or the entire travel. Okay. So that looks pretty good, actually. All right. So that's it. I'm about ready to plot now. So I center the pen over the very middle of the egg. Now I go back to my uh, Inkscape here, and I've opened this file, hello world.svg. It's one of our example files. From our extensions menu, I select Eggbot, Eggbot Control. I'm just going to go to the Plot tab and hit Apply, and let's see what happens. Okay, so how do we do? Well, it looks like um, when we first started drawing, the pen had a dry tip. So I forgot to give you a hint, which is before you do any plot, stick a piece of paper in here and make sure your pen ink is actually going. There's a good one. Um, so let's try centering a little bit differently and actually doing another plot on the same thing. You might think, oh, I can turn this by hand. It's actually a little difficult to do so. So we have additional controls inside the eggbot extension, like this manual control, to walk the egg motor by, let's say, 1600 steps. That's half revolution. We apply. And that gets us halfway around the egg. Let's go a little bit further. There. Blank slate. And it looks like we haven't centered this egg that well because we're really close to the surface now. I'm going to try raising this up a little more. Okay, and then let's try plotting again. Oh, I'm going to remember this time. I'm going to actually bleed the tip a little before we plot. Let's see if this works a little better. There we go. Works on the first letter this time. Now there are a heck of a lot of other options within the Inkscape extension for controlling things like the rate at which you lower and raise the pen, um, controlling the speed that the pen moves when it's up and when it's down, and um, other types of manual commands as well. Uh, we have documentation of that all on the website. And um, that's it. That's how to get to your first plot here on the A button.